The world was torn down. All of those giant silica pillars that reached up into the heavens, into other realms, those trees were chopped down. They were cut down for some reason. And it falls to us to try to reverse engineer history and figure out why. What had happened? Who cut it down? With what? Where did it go? What happened? It seems that there are some nuggets in the Book of Enoch that talk about the giant trees having been cut down by the titans of old. Let me read from the Book of Enoch here. This is going to be chapter 66, and I'm going to start at verse 2. In those days, the word of God came to me, and I said, Noah, behold, your lot has ascended up to me, a lot void of crime, a lot beloved and upright. Now then, shall the angels labor at the trees? But when they proceed to do this, I will put my hand upon it and preserve it. That's the key one right there. The angels shall labor at the trees. How interesting. So it talks about the lofty trees all throughout um, these various texts. And then it goes on to say, The seed of life shall arise from it, and a change shall take place. And the dry land shall not be left empty. We're focusing on the angels will labor or work on, right? Do something to uh, the trees. One translation says they shall uh, labor at the trees or it could be said are making a wooden structure. The angels are making a wooden structure. What are the angels doing? Now angels, as I've talked about in some of my other videos, um, there's other words for that, okay? I believe this is a direct reference to the titans of old. Um, let me cut to the chase. I'm talking about the no forest on flat earth theory, right? The theory that um, we once had a realm that was beautiful, it was a garden paradise. Everything was majestic and grand, including these gigantic silica pillars that we refer to as giant trees that once existed, that shot up past the clouds and went into the heavens into another realm and connected downwards into the realms below us as well. They were sort of portal into other worlds. And this is where we get stories like Jack and the Beanstalk where he climbs up this pillar and he ends up in the land of the Titans or the Giants, right? We see the evidence for these trees, or as I call them, the silica pillars, all around us. Um, and they're, you know, they're in movies, they're in books, and they're all over the place if we just have the eyes to see them. Now, they have been cut down. Our world was terraformed. That paradise was destroyed. It was carved down. Now, was it carved down just because there was a bunch of angry titans just, you know, slobbering all over the place like a caveman and they just wanted to kill things and destroy things? I'm not sure. I know that's the picture that we're painted, right? But look at this. This is evidence, you know. Uh, society and the world at large would try to have you believe that this is just erosion. You know, wind and rain over time just carved out this perfect tree stump right there in the middle of nowhere, and it didn't have any effect on the surrounding areas whatsoever, okay? I don't believe it. I'm going to repeat that verse from the book of Enoch, just that one particular, chapter 66, verse 2. Now then shall the angels labor at the trees, but when they proceed to do this, I will put my hand upon it and preserve it. It's interesting to me that it says preserve it. It's talking about the trees, but then it says preserve it, as in singular, right? I wonder if there is still the world tree at the center of our Middle Earth up at the North Pole, what we call the North Pole. A lot of people speculate that that one has been chopped down as well, but I think that was the main one, and maybe the reason why it's so difficult for anybody to get to the North Pole is not because of extreme temperatures, but because you can only go to a certain distance from this world tree before you can start to see it due to perspective and line of sight and things of that nature, right? I mean, you would think that everyone would just be able to see it, but that's not the case when it comes to breaking down perspective, right? You can still have a world tree up there at the North Pole that still exists. I lean towards it still existing. I'm not sure, but that's a theory that I have. I'm going to read some more quotes from Enoch that I feel are very relevant. I was laying down in the house of my grandfather 
Machalel, when I saw in a vision heaven purifying and snatched away. And when it says heaven, it's talking about the sky, right? Our dome of the heaven above us. And falling to the earth. So he saw the heaven falling to the earth. He saw the sky falling, right? The sky can't fall. Physical things fall down, right? So something physical up above us called the heavens, he saw in a vision falling down to the earth, just like Chicken Little, who says, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Uh, we make fun of that, you know, but that hits home to me. That feels like there's some truth there, that the sky has the capability to fall. Something above us that we look at and we call the sky or the heavens or the expanse or space or whatever has the ability to one day break apart and fall downwards. And falling to the earth, I saw likewise the earth absorbed by a great abyss and mountains suspended over mountains. Hills were sinking upon hills. Lofty trees were gliding off from their trunks and were in the act of being projected and of sinking into the abyss. Lofty trees were gliding off of their trunks and were in the act of being projected and sinking into the abyss, sinking into what we call the ocean these days. This blows my mind. This is, amazes me. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why we don't explore the ocean. Those really deep parts of the ocean, we don't share those with people. I believe that there are all kinds of remnants of an ancient world down at the bottom of the ocean because I believe that the ancient world was fossilized. It was turned into stone. So let me reread that. Hills, this is a vision that he saw. Hills were sinking upon hills, lofty trees, not regular trees, lofty trees, silica pillars. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, were gliding off from their trunks and were in the act of being projected and sinking into the abyss. <sighs> that amazes me. So let me read this as well. This is from chapter 16, uh, verse 1. It says, And as to the death of the giants, wheresoever their spirits depart from their bodies, let their flesh, that which is perishable, be without judgment. Thus shall they perish until the day of the great consummation of the great world. A destruction shall take place of the watchers and the impious. Let their flesh be without judgment. Now, the alternative rendering of that is also here. Instead of let their flesh be without judgment, it says, or their flesh shall be destroyed before the judgment. So what this is saying to me, let their flesh, which is perishable, be without judgment. So the judgment of the flesh is for it to rot away. The judgment of the flesh is to decay and to go to go away, to disappear, to return to the earth and to, you know, rot, basically. But let it be without judgment, meaning don't let their flesh decay and rot. Now this ties right into mud fossil theory because the flesh literally turned into stone. So their bodies were to be kept intact, whole, for the most part, until this quote-unquote day of judgment when their bodies would pass away. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to everybody um, for making so many of the things that I do possible. Uh, I never thought it would be possible, you know, to, to do what I do and to present these things and, and people would actually care and listen and be intrigued and inspired to go on their own and to to look at the world differently and to share information as well. So thank you, all of you. J Dreamers, think outside the box.